is Ask a Fee Only Financial Planner Podcast, episode number 19, brought to you by AIO Financial, a fee only financial planning firm at AIOfinancial.com. This podcast provides personal financial knowledge so that you can manage your own financial situation. I'm Bill Holiday. Thank you for joining me for this episode. I'm going to be discussing Greenbacker Renewable Energy Company. This is an alternative investment, and for this, in the next three podcasts, I'm going to be describing, discussing different alternative investments. So what's the advantage of an alternative investment, or why even invest in them? The, the point is that they don't move. Alternative investments aren't going to move exactly with the stock market or with the bond market. They're going to provide some diversification to your portfolio. They'll... This by no means needs to be a dominant part of a portfolio or a large investment. Usually we recommend in alternative investments no more than 5 to 10% of your portfolio. But it's an important piece. It's a piece that can be generating income even if the market's down, interest rates are forcing bond funds to go down. Um, what alternative investments... It's a broad category. It can mean a lot of things. We could be talking about commodities or preferred shares or, you know, different strategies to, uh, to I guess, beat the market or invest a little differently. Even long shorts and options would be alternatives. What I'm going to focus on in this episode and then the next three are about trading liquidity for potentially a better, more stable return. Again, this will provide diversification. So there are opportunities where you're investing your money in either real estate endeavors, energy, loan funds, business necessary equipment uh, investments, and you're getting a rent as return. They could be real estate investments or REITs that they're gathering momentum, and then the exit is going to be when it goes to market and it becomes a publicly traded REIT, and then you can get your money out. These aren't liquid like uh, stocks, ETFs, mutual funds, I may have said this. Uh, you, they have a duration that's generally, well, it's quite a bit longer. It's, it's several years. Um, many of them have criterias. In the case of Greenbacker Renewable Energy, there is a, kind of an accredited light criteria for investors. So accredited investor is someone who has a net worth of a million dollars or more. Accredited light, not including your home or automobiles. Your net worth needs to be 250000 or more. And for this criteria as well, the gross income, you need to have at least 70000 So if you meet one of those two goals, you can invest in an investment like this. The other drawback to an investment like this is there is a minimum. Greenbacker has a minimum of $2,000. Um, some of the others are some higher, some lower, uh, but they're not like a mutual fund where you could just buy $10 worth. Um, the other difference is in the case of Greenbacker, they're going to give you a simplified K-1 for your tax returns. The a mutual fund, the where you have it held, is going to give you a 1099. Some of these alternative investments do give 1099s, which, which are a little easier. They come out a little sooner, generally, and they're real easy to incorporate in your tax return. A simplified K-1 is another piece of paper on your tax return. It's not the end of the world or a deal breaker, but it is something to consider. There's a little bit more, a little more cumbrance there. So let me discuss or describe this uh, Greenbacker Renewable Energy Fund. It is, I've spoken with the people at Greenbacker and they do not want to be recorded for a podcast for compliance reasons, which I understand. They did give me some audio and video that is approved, so we'll be cutting to that in a moment. But what they do is they buy, generally, alternative energy plants, and then they sell long-term energy contracts, generally 30 years, to cities, sometimes corporations. 
that's how they're generating their income. So let me cut to the video that they've provided or the audio, depending on how you're taking this in. Greenbacker is a company focused on purchasing and owning power generating facilities that sell energy, specifically electricity, to commercial buyers under long-term contracts. Rather than acquiring pollution-heavy power plants, Greenbacker's focus is on acquiring facilities that generate power from clean and renewable sources, such as sunlight, wind, moving water, and the Earth's own geothermal heat. Greenbacker also expects to provide capital to finance energy efficiency projects through long-term contracts with credit-worthy commercial enterprises. Furthermore, Greenbacker is not an emerging technology or clean tech investor. Instead, they purchase power plants that utilize trusted technologies that Greenbacker believes can generate relatively predictable cash flows over time through the contracted sale of electricity. Renewables already account for 12% of energy production in the U.S. and by 2030, nearly 70% of new power generation is expected to come from renewable sources. This evolution is generally due to energy demand, the retirement of existing power plants, declining costs to build renewable energy power plants, and carbon emission regulations. Steve wonders how an investment in Greenbacker can potentially provide him with monthly distributions. Susan explains that Greenbacker shares its income from the long-term contracted sale of electricity with investors through monthly distributions. Susan adds that Greenbacker's monthly distributions are expected to be treated as a return of capital, reducing the cost basis of his shares. As long as Steve's cost basis remains above zero, distributions are not expected to be subject to income tax. Although a successful liquidity event and the subsequent sales of Steve's shares would likely result in capital gains tax. Greenbacker can play a strategic role in helping diversify Steve's portfolio and complementing the existing investments he uses to generate monthly distribution payments as well as provide exposure to infrastructure investments in a rapidly growing sector of the economy. Steve is excited to align his investment goals with his personal values. He likes the idea of a potential tax-favored investment opportunity and the socially responsible nature of Greenbacker's investments. All right, I hope that was informative of what they're doing, just buying these energy plants and selling contracts a few details about holding this fund. I discussed that you need to qualify by being accredited light. You can hold this at a brokerage house such as Schwab. It will be on their alternative investments platform and there can be some fees for holding an alternative investment. Uh, Greenbacker does reimburse those fees for the first two years of the fund, uh, at least for Schwab. This fund started in 2013. It's expected to run until 2018. This particular fund, this is the first iteration of it, will close in August 2016. They have a certain amount of money they want to raise. In 2016, it'll close. It'll run for another two years and then distribute the assets back to the investors. Most likely in 2016, when this fund closes, Greenbacker will open a new fund that follows a similar strategy of buying these alternative energy plants and uh, getting contracts, long-term contracts. The return is 6.3% currently. It's been yielding since, since inception about 11%. So it's paying out 6.3% and the remainder is going back into the fund, growing the value of the fund and investors should see that additional return when the fund terminates. Uh, the target is around a 15 to 20 percent return. You don't know. This isn't a guaranteed return. It's not like a bond or a CD. It's, it's paying 6.3 percent, but then there is wiggle room as to how this will all work out during the next uh, three years of the life of the fund.
Uh, and this is the first iteration, so we don't have a lot of history. We know that it's been yielding around 11%, but going forward, there are risks to this. One of the risks is energy prices, alternative energy, maybe a new type of energy comes on the market and solar and wind are no longer needed. Um, so th there are some risks. Taxes, I did say that you get a simplified K-1, but there are no state and no federal taxes on this uh, because of the type of investment it is. So that's a nice bonus uh, for having this in a taxable account. Um, let's see, I, th I think this again, alternative investments can make up a portion of a portfolio. This shouldn't be your only investment in a portfolio for sure. There are risks involved. Please consult with your financial advisor, read the perspective. This isn't appropriate for everyone, but I did want to share some information about some of these alternative investments that are out there. So that wraps up episode number 19. Next podcast, I'll be talking about TriLink Global Impact Fund. And it's similar in that it's a, an alternative investment where you're trading liquidity for hopefully a better return. Uh, thank you for listening to Ask a Fee-Only Financial Planner podcast. This has been, been brought to you by AIO Financial, an independent fee-only financial planning firm. If you need help with any part of your finances, please contact AIO Financial for a free meeting at AIOfinancial.com. As always, I appreciate any feedback. I'd like to know if someone's out there listening, watching these. You can contact me through Facebook, email me, bill at AIOfinancial.com or call 520-325-0769. Take care.